Hey there, space cats! Why do I call you that? Because we are all floating around in space and you are cool cats! If this is our first outing together then, hello! My name is Jules, I write and illustrate children's books. This week I have no specific book work on, but it's important to keep that muscle memory working. So I am giving myself a project. Here's the brief. Produce a full colour A4 landscape image of a bookshop from outside. This forms one of the images for an early reader's book aimed at five to seven year olds. The text for which reads, Herbie was so excited to get home and look at his book properly. I am procrastinating a little on my next big project because I've had a problem with my studio and have been utterly unable to decide what on earth to do. Part of my wooden floor has had a hole nibbled into it by some four-legged fluffy pants who was trying their luck with my bird food. Hmm. Needless to say, I have blocked up the hole. But in doing so, I discovered some other structural issues which definitely need dealing with. Hence the delay on starting the project. I will need to fix all that and have a really, really good tidy up before I do anything else. So rather than while away the week snoozing and eating biscuits, I decided to set myself a one day project to keep my finger in the creative pot of dreams. This week there are no pencils involved. I know, shock. It's all painted with watercolour. The line work is done with a Tombow Fudanosuke soft tipped brush pen, which is also a detour for me. I usually use the hard tipped one, but I actually really liked using the soft tip one and will definitely use it again. I'm waiting for a warm, sunny day so that I can empty my studio, throw out what is unnecessary, move the garden tools and the whatnotery into the other shed, fix the problems, ugh, and maybe even redecorate. It deserves some love. Anyway, to the illustration. I really like to work wet in wet. You've probably heard this term before, but if you haven't, it means wetting the paper first and then adding the pigment so that it moves around as it settles. I really like the unpredictability of the shapes and the textures that this method leaves. Sometimes it doesn't work out very well, but I would say for the majority of the time, I really like what happens. It's kind of like having a partnership with watercolour. Almost like being a nature photographer. The artist sets up the shop, but what happens within the picture is up to the materials. In this case, the water and the pigment. Using this technique also relieves you of some responsibility. Your input is only half of what is going on. And if you're new to watercolour, why not give it a go? You could just draw the outline of something, it could just be a circle. And when the line is dry, add some plain water and then pick up some paint on a paintbrush and dab it into the wet paper and see what happens. You can experiment with the amount of water you're using as well as the amount of pigment. You can use pans of colour, that's the little blocks of colour usually in a set, or you can use a tube. The tubes usually have a brighter, more saturated colour. Just a note on line work, make sure that you are using waterproof ink and let it dry really, really thoroughly. When using the Tombow pens, I let it dry for at least an hour, sometimes more. Otherwise you run the risk of running it and smudging. But if you don't have a, a sort of proper drawing pen like that, you can use a ballpoint pen. Those inks are almost always waterproof. But again, just let it dry for a while before painting. You don't need to spend a fortune on brushes and paint if you're just trying this out. But if you mean for illustrating to be your job, it is definitely worth looking for artist quality materials. 
If you have your heart set on art being your job or a major part of your life, investing some money in good paint is worthwhile. I still use student quality paintbrushes. They don't last as long, but they're okay to use. My last set were from The Range in the UK and cost about £10. But I do try to find better pigments to work with. In other news in the household, following Wally's passing back in January, I'm often asked how Maisie, our other dog, is coping. And the honest answer is, she loves the 100% attention. I bet she's wondering why he didn't move out years ago. She spends all day with my husband, looking after him, I'm using air quotes off screen, and reminding him at regular intervals that it's nearly 11sies or lunchtime or is it dinner time yet? She's also getting the hang of meditation. At least I think that's why she perches on my stomach while I'm lying down, all zen-like. I am hoping that at some point we'll be able to adopt a cat from the shelter that's nearby, but it will have to be some time down the line. My husband is potentially going to have some rather gruelling treatment in the next six months, having had four cycles of chemo that started just before Christmas. YouTube, being a very useful place, has shown me a video from a UK establishment in, for the type of cancer that he has, laying out exactly what will happen in this treatment. Needless to say, having a four-legged furball knocking around will not do his immune system much good, and this is likely to go on until the end of the year. In the meantime, Maisie is getting a decent amount of fuss and attention and seems to think that it's just fine by her. The technicalities of living on an island can sometimes be quite challenging. There are two types of boat to the mainland, the car ferry which takes around an hour and the high speed service which takes around 25 minutes. I had planned for us to take the high speed service to get to the hospital appointments this week, very vital for the next stage. And this included reserving a parking space right next to the terminal, which you can do if you're an NHS patient visiting the main hospital on the mainland. However, the high-speed boat developed a fairly catastrophic problem, meaning that we'll have to take the car ferry, but on foot. That meant rearranging the parking space, as my husband can't walk very far, and the taxi at the other end. It did leave me feeling a little anxious about the whole trip, but hopefully it's all sorted out now. I hope you can forgive this video coming out a little bit late, but with all that going on over the weekend, now you know why. I often get asked if I ever do commissioned work for others, and the answer is yes, I do. As and when I can fit it into my schedule. So if you have a great idea and a budget for making a book, then drop me a line. OK, that's me all done. I think this would have worked out OK to send to a client if it was a real project. What do you think? Hey folks, if you are as excited about books and art as I am, then you might be interested in these courses that will teach you what I know. Make a Picture Book Step by Step will help you go about writing, illustrating and publishing your own picture book. It's a comprehensive course, starting with making your key decisions and takes you all the way to making your print-ready copy. Do you need to know how to draw children, or dragons, or sea creatures? These shorter classes will help you do just that. Pop over to my website and see what's on offer. Go on, give it a go. Next week, I will be looking at the guidance for writing children's books and why it's so important to consider when you are getting your story idea down on paper. Until then, I'm off to the bathroom to sing like no one's listening, mainly because no one will be listening. I will see you next week. Nanu, nanu.